Bro, listen. Never in my life associated the word boring with baseball. We know, we know what's up. Me? Yeah. Famous? Yeah. And I'm like giddy over there smiling like, holy, I mean, we're about to win this shit. Did anyone give you crap? Give me a good like host story. You know, I'm like, I'm not picking it up. No, we both love the game. We, we talk about it every day. Can't get off baseball. Having some popcorn, you're fooling around your phone. I'd have to weigh a mine for three hours. Like, but hang on, because it's about to be a wild ride. All right, there's nobody I'd rather have on the podcast today than Roger Arrieta and Carlos Arfaro, who are part of the Bleed Lows podcast. I I want to say one of our best friends, one of our best friends. In it, in it from the beginning, um, appreciate all that you guys do and all that you are uh, when it comes to the world of the Dodgers. You're taking care of our guy, our godfather, our our founder, our CEO, the guy who who actually owns the LLC, the baseballs and boring, Joe Kelly. So, how are you guys? I'm doing great, Rob. Thanks, thanks for having us on and you know talking about you know some Joe Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> and that's Roger. We're, we're Carlos, say hi to everybody. Yeah, hi. How's everybody doing? We're doing we're doing good because we took uh, the series from the Yankees. Uh so that's the thing, man. And and you did guys and and the Dodgers fans did it to uh to Fenway last year. They took over the Bronx this year. It's just it's 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 just good to be listen, here it is. Like it's just good to be a Dodgers guy, right? It's just good to be a Dodgers fan, isn't it? It it truly is. You know, we're always in the playoffs, you know, we're always expecting to play. You know, in October, so it's it's great. It's uh, it's been a it's been a great run since uh, what twenty thirteen. So we expect the same, and hopefully with Otani, you know, the playoff will last longer this time. We'll get to, we'll hopefully play the last game of the season. Roger, does it feel different than last year? I mean, being a Dodger fan for so long, like I mean, there's always those highs and those lows, right? And yeah, it feels it feels different. Like there's a different, like there's a different something to this team right with with the talent they got but you know they they were just going through you know kind of a, a little low so you're kind of like oh man you kind of get nervous and it's just baseball right it's baseball and and you know we'll, we'll see like you know, carlos was saying like all that matters is right when they get to october and then we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens in that's october. the thing right you're <laughs> yeah. holding your breath yeah you're holding for sure your breath. for sure i mean like i said being a, such a, a dodger fan for so long like you know they get in the playoffs and then you're expecting them to go have a deep run and then all of a sudden they get knocked out. And you're like, oh man, here we go again. So, so this year I'm kind of like, yeah, I know they got the team, they got the talent, but let's get let's get through October. Let's, let's do it in October. Can I can I tell you? So when I was out there in um, and Roger, I saw you out there in September. We had a book signing out there, and, and I, when I it was actually Joe Kelly bobblehead night, and the vibes were maybe it was because it was Joe Kelly bobblehead night. And this is sort of going to segue into what we're talking about, but the vibes of, of, of the whole fan base, Dodger stadium, the whole thing. And I know it didn't end up like you wanted in the playoffs, but let me just tell you just soak it in, man. I mean, guys, just soak it in. It is, it is, it is a fun place to be. I, I mean, that's, I mean, that's from somebody who just got dropped in there I'm like, oh man, the vibe here is off the charts, you know. I mean, for sure. I mean, going to Dodger Stadium, you know, having that backdrop and watching games there, it's incredible, right? Like, you love going to the stadium and just soaking all that in. And I do take advantage, like every year, like like I said, we have we've had a a team that's been consistently playing. So enjoy that, enjoy that till we get to October. Just enjoy, because a lot of people. A lot of people be like, ah, you know, the, the season doesn't matter. Whatever happens in the season, what happens in the playoffs, it, which is true, but we got to enjoy the ride to get there. And and enjoy so many it. good things, so many good things can happen during the season, right? Seeing Otani now for a full season, right? Seeing Mookie Betts, seeing these guys, Freddie Freeman, all together playing together for the first time. So we got to enjoy that. And then once we get October, it's October and it's different, different mindset. And we'll, we'll get, once we get there, we get there. Yeah. I mean, think, listen. You could be the. We just did a podcast with Cordy Finnegan uh, and, and talking about being a White Sox follower. All they get to hang their hat on is like a great milkshake at the park. You know, it's like that's it. Like that's it. It, it and yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, Carlos, what you got a lot of bobbleheads back there, right? I do. I do. I collect. 
I mean, I collect from uh, mainly Dodgers, but I have over 500 bobbleheads. Oh, I'm a big baseball fan in general. I mean, uh, one of my favorite ones is this one here. Oh, that nice. So the who's one, on uh, first, Abbott has, and Costello. That's right. And it has the audio. I made but yeah, and I'm a big I'm a baseball fan. Uh, I, I, first and I, foremost, you know. I made uh this uh um early this year, I forget even what city I was in, but early this year I made a hotel clerk recite who's on first because they said, Hey, listen, I'm like, if you want the base, if you want the baseballs and the boring sticker, you gotta earn it. And because they, they said they could, and it was uh, they claim came close enough, good enough. So. Yeah, no, such a clever, uh, uh, you know, comic act between Abbott and Costello. It's just, it's, it's, it's classic. And if you really pay attention to it, how quick they were using who is actually their name is, is, is so clever. Oh, so yeah, um, look, I'm a season ticket holder. I go to 30, 40 games a year. I love the whole atmosphere about baseball. Every game I go to, I show up four hours before the game. I do batting practice. I have, I bring my food. I have a picnic at Dodger Stadium every time we go. And it's like every year, you know, when the year's over, yeah, you're disappointed, but then, you know, you're hopeful for next season, and and that's how we feel. And then we, I enjoy it. I enjoy it every year, and we feel we have we feel like we have a shot every year. And definitely this year, the the chances of us winning is is greater. And you can see it on on all these uh, different like betting sites where we're either one or two to win the World Series next to the Yankees. Yeah, there's no doubt. So, so I'll go back to when I was there, Carlos Joe Kelly bobblehead night. Were you first in line or you got it? You got it right there. There it is. Mariachi it is. Joe. Is. Mariachi Joe. So it that's was, right. It was, it, I got to be honest with you. It was like, it kind of insane, like how, how popular that thing was. And maybe like, it was just because I was there. Maybe because everyone loves Bob, any bobblehead. So I guess you're the perfect person to ask. And this, again, this will sort of segue into our Joe Kelly conversation. Where would you rank the Joe Kelly bobblehead? Uh, fandom compared to the other bobbleheads they've given away. Okay, so honestly, until this year, it was number one. And not only number one, because we're talking about Joe Kelly, number one, because it was the price of, of the bobblehead. If I'm mistaken, I think I actually sold one for like 100 bucks at the day of the game because they had sold out and we had some extra ones. And and the value of it didn't drop. I mean, it, it dropped. Like they all, they, all, they all dropped after, you know, the off season, but it helped. It still has pretty good value. It still sells for about 60 bucks. The only bobblehead, you know, that kind of took over that was the Shohei Otani, which was uh, a couple weeks ago. But just be, below Shohei is the Mariachi Joe for sure, 100%. So that was when, when the Mariachi Joe bobblehead that popped up last September. Of all the bobbleheads leading up to that, that was the one. That that was number one for sure. You know, before that, it was anything Vince Scully, uh, some Tommy, Fernando, a uh, couple of bets, but once they had the Mariachi Joe bobblehead, that took over in, in price. You can see on eBay, if you go back, you'll see the, the history on how much they were selling for. So yeah, Joe Kelly's bobblehead took, took number one. Perfect. Perfect. Again, perfect segue. I'm going to ask... Real, 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 real quick, and I think too, because it was a different type of bobblehead, right? Most most bobbleheads, especially that the Dodgers do, it's like, you know, they're pitching, they're hitting or something. Yeah. So this is... He has a mariachi jacket on, right? So it's it's a little different than what a normal Dodgers bobblehead looks like. You know, if you go back and look at all the bobbleheads they've given this year, they're they're playing, you know, they're they're hitting, they're fielding or pitching, or whatever. So I think being a different type of looking bobblehead, I think made it pretty special, pretty you know, pretty extra, especially for like collectors. And can I tell you? And I don't know. So when I was there that night. It was also, you know, obviously you have the the mural, whatever, the 30 foot high mural when you enter. What gate is that? You guys would know better than I. It's, it's up I in the reserve. It's, uh, field, like yeah, it's field it's, side it's, on field level. Okay. No, it's, on, it's on reserve, up on reserve. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you, you go in there and I walk in, I'm like, and there was literally a line. It was all the way around. I mean, 200 yards, whatever it was. And I said, is Joe posing? in front of this thing like why are all these people in this line to to go to in front of the the joe kelly mural and it was just because it was a joe kelly mural and this i mean this was sort of leading to what i'm saying is that and it, yeah yes it was his bobblehead night but 
it was amazing. My my kids were there. Like, what's what's going on? What's happening? Like, what's they're posing in front of? It's let's be honest, guys. It's they're posing in front of. They have not only do they have this iconic bobblehead doll, but they have a thirty foot high mural of a middle relief pitcher. You know, in the gate where you walk in, and there's a line around the the corner to pose in front of it. So. What's going on? <laughs> you know, it's why. So I guess Roger, I'll start with you. Okay, you you also Roger were at the book signing. We were there, right? So this was this was in what town was that in? I forget. I believe it's Ontario. Yeah, it wasn't close. Wherever it was, it wasn't yeah, not to Dodger Stadium. No, no, not to Dodger Stadium. No, it wasn't close. It was sort of in a in like an industrial park. It was for a great cause. And I think it was people could could pay a hundred bucks and they get a book and it, it goes to the cause and they get to to uh, to meet Joe sold out. And this was like 10 in the morning on a weekday. And so we show up 10 in the morning on a weekday in a town well outside the city, well outside Dodger Stadium um, and sold out. And you were there. I mean, you like it, it's people. People are saying I flew in and this and that. I'll come back to it. I get it. Like I have a vested interest in this, but this is why I want to talk to you guys, Roger. I'll start with you. What is what is the dynamic that makes this happen? You know, I mean, it, it's interesting, right? Because you know, we look at Joe Kelly, like you said, middle relief pitcher, right? You know, he's a dude on you know that plays for the Dodgers, and all of a sudden this guy just blew up right like he now he's like one of the most popular dodgers i've known for for i go back for many years i think he's one of the most popular he has a mural right he got a bobblehead what what middle relief pitchers do you see that are getting bobbleheads if i go back to trying to remember the last dodgers reliever that got a bobblehead was probably like joe bimel and that was like some weird odd Odd thing that he got a. a Kenley never. Kenley never got a bobblehead. Well, well, closer. Yeah, closer. Yeah. Okay. Kenley, Kenley oh, got middle, a couple middle bobbleheads. Middle relievers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a middle reliever. You know, pitcher that's on the team. Joe Kelly gets a bobblehead, and you know, I think just for everything that he's done, right? That you know, the the Astros thing with, with Korea. That that kind of I think just put him right up there, right? And then and then he shows up to the White House in in the mariachi suit. I mean, pushes him way more over than he already was, right? And then. I mean, even this year, when you go back to this year, I went to a couple of the um, when he did one of the when he showed up at his school, yeah, his old school. Oh the yeah, the day, yeah, so, the so I was there, yeah. and he did he did that crib dance. So I mean, just it's kind of like whatever Joe Kelly does, it kind of just blows up, right? I mean, I, and I think that's the cool thing about Joe Kelly too. Like when you talk to him, he's like he's like a regular dude. He's down to earth. Just you know, he'll talk to you. He's he's like. Like you know, just anybody, right? Cause you can talk to him just like anybody. You walk up to on the street and talk to the student, and Joe Kelly will talk to you. And that's the type of person that Joe Kelly is. And I think a lot of fans see that. And I think that's kind of why, you know, what they connect with him. There's a connection there with him, and I think that's why he's so popular. I think that's a great way to put it. There's a connection, right? And you, and I remember, you know, you obviously you, him, not only Joe but his wife Ashley, um, who takes care of the social media because Joe isn't on social media, and so. uh but you know, Ashley was at that at that book signing. What she was the the one that was organizing the fundraiser for the charity, and she's yeah, she's great too. So anyway, but but you're right. I mean, I think that that's at the end of the day, and whether it's you're meeting him or whether you're relating to him or you're like he's the goofball that you want a baseball player to be, like you can relate to that. So from Carlos, from your from your perspective, how do you see it? I see it that that we're when, so when the Dodgers lose the 2017 World Series against the Astros, and you know all this you know this animosity towards the Astros, and the you know, Dodgers, you know the players didn't fight back like physically or do anything until Joe Kelly throws at uh, Carlos Correa, right, and then he does a pouty face that 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 whole thing took a life of his own. And and that's where I think his legend starts growing with the fan base with the Dodgers, you know, I mean, look, they made a shirt, you know, <laughs> they made a shirt. So, I mean, this is where, where the legend begins, honestly. And then like uh, Roger just mentioned, 
then, you know, you know, Dodger Stadium, you know, there's a lot of a large Mexican, you know, fan base. And a lot of them, you know, they're, 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 they can associate to mariachi. I think on Tuesday, Tuesday before, it was Taco Tuesday, and they would have a mariachi out in left field. They would play. It, it was, it was you know, it's cool, you know. And then him connecting with a mariachi, you know, trading the mariachi for his jersey, taking it to the White House, and then making a bow. I mean, his legend just grew even more. And that's why Joe Kelly's Joe Kelly. And, and what you guys both said, I went to a, a, a meet and greet uh, for season ticket holders, and He's a genuine person. He just seems like the average, yeah, no pun intended. He seems like the average Joe, right. you know. And uh, he was just cool. He was a cool guy, you know. Didn't you know? It was, you know, my son. And I used to get a lot of autographs, and we met a lot of players. Some are really cool. Some are, you know, just not, you know, not not the friendliest. But Joe Kelly is definitely hands down a genuine person, and that's that's my take. And his legend keeps growing. And hopefully, you know, I at that uh, meet and greet, I did ask him. My question was. No, when are you going to come out to Wild Thing? Mm. I think that moment, if, when that moment happens at Dodger Stadium, I, I, it's going to be one of the greatest moments at Dodger Stadium. If, if, if I hope, I hope it happens. You know, so 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 we we're, we're going to actually, um, I guess, on the day today when this is dropping. So this this is going to be one of the reasons we're doing this is because it's Joe Kelly. I don't know how to say it, uniform night, and yeah, whatever. Sure. Jersey, Jersey night. Jersey, Jersey night. Yeah, Jersey Jersey night. night. 99. And so um, Joe is going to, we're going to, we're executing a live stream of Joe driving to the park um, to this big day for him. And believe me, for him, it's a big day. Like it is. Uh, to understand, I was talking to him and, and ton of friends and families. And I think his high school uh, team is going to be there because I think they won the state or something like that uh corona and um so uh it's a big deal but carlos i am going to ask him that i will ask him that on his drive let's go when are you coming in for the wild the wild thing because shelby miller told me that in when he was in st louis which i didn't know that he had cut his hair you know like the wild thing and the cardinals told him to knock it off <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> come on he did mention that uh, and, and that meet and greet, somebody asked him or he brought it up. He said that when he was with the Cardinals, the organization was a little more old fashioned. And there was a lot of stuff that clashed with his personality and that he couldn't do. So, yeah, he de definitely mentioned that. Yeah. So it's so I will ask him that and we'll, we'll we'll get to the bottom of this. But, you know, it's funny you guys are mentioning this because when I met Joe it was in Boston. Right. And and you talked about the Korea incident sort of set his everything in motion and then it just went from there um really like if you go back to 2018 he was he was with the red sox you know 2015 2016 2017 really sort of nondescript goes to the bullpen in 2018 at the beginning of 2018 blows the first game of the year i mean just gives up four runs and if you said, well, who's the least popular player on the 25-man roster, Joe Kelly would have been it. Two weeks later, he gets in the fight with Tyler Austin, the iconic Joe Kelly fight club. Overnight, becomes the most popular guy. Finally, his personality comes out. People, He became, from that, then on in, whether it's, and we saw it you know, when the book came out, Los Angeles and Boston. It wasn't complicated. Those two places, for those reasons, love Joe Kelly. So, um, you know yeah. what? I mean, it's funny because he came here what start for the 2020 season, right? Was, yeah. So, before prior to the Korea thing, I mean, I think he'd come out. You know, he had blown some opportunities, right? And the fans were kind of getting on him. They were kind of like, "Yeah, I don't know about this Joe Kelly guy. I don't yeah. know." And then all of a sudden, he throws at Korea, and it just like. Joe Kelly, Joe Kelly is it. Joe Kelly is the dude now. And like you said, kind of the same thing, kind of just flipped, you know, that his whole, his whole fandom just flipped. And from that moment, it's kind of just, you know, took it off. And then you, and, and Roger, you talked about the, the, the um, bobblehead and you're right. I mean, there's hardly any middle relievers that have bobbleheads, but I know this, there's definitely no middle relievers that have 30 foot high murals on, on a wall in a prominent place at a historic ballpark. 
I mean, Jonas, and, and that's a huge credit to Jonas Never, right? I mean, it was he had already put it on Floyd's barbershop. That's great. But it's uh it's all of it, and I we we're doing this because again, this today is the gonna be the big day. Um, Jersey night, Joe's Jersey night. And by the way, did you guys when all that was what going down with the Otani thing, getting the number, did any of that surprise you? I mean, I mean, I, I kind of figured that Joe was gonna was gonna, you know, work something out with him. And I think I even messaged asking asking you kind of like, hey, do you know if he's what what he's gonna do? And and um, and I mean to see him, you know, like you were mentioning his wife Ashley, like, I mean the video she did, I mean oh. incredible. Like, I mean the way she like, I mean I don't if it it looks it feels like you know like this is something you would have went to like a marketing company like, hey, this is what I want to do right, and this is something that she just thought of right and started filming and started, you know, throwing, throwing jerseys around and, and, you know, offering the number to show him. And then at the end, you know, she does a big reveal with the calls him out and she puts the 99 on the back, you know, so, so good. I mean, all that stuff's like so cool. Like you said, it's awesome. And like credit to her. And, but, you know, I mean, it's an awesome thing what they did for him. And then what show he goes back and yeah. he gives her a Porsche. Yeah, listen, it was, it, it was either initially we asked him, and I don't know if I had said this back to a message to you, but it, Initially, when I first asked him about that possibility, that I don't think Otani had signed yet, but it, if that if that was a possibility, it was uh, either he said either a car or one eighth of his contractor's bill because they just you know built a house or something. So yeah, so he he settled for the car. <laughs> it's but it's you know I I think guys it's. It really is. I, I really appreciate your, your perspective of it. And um, and I hope you are. Are you going to be able to, I mean, listen, I mean, you guys got to get, you guys got to get jerseys, right? Let's go. I'll yeah. be there for sure tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Taking the whole family. Yeah. We'll all get jerseys. And you get there early. You get... I do. I do. I get there like uh, three. So they allow us to get into the stadium three hours before the game. So we get to watch some batting practice from the Dodgers. Typically, all the bullpen guys are out there on the field throwing or just just uh, catching fly balls. Is it? Is this? Where would you? We we talked about ranking the ball, but where is this in terms of the giveaways? From the jerseys, you know, so jerseys, uh, they do about, I would say they do about four or five jerseys a year. It'll it'll rank pretty high. I think it'll be pretty popular. Um, you know, the, the jersey one that I could think of that, I just it's just a little bit above would be the Vince Scully one. They had a microphone with a Vince Scotty yeah, jersey. Pretty that, good. It just below that one, I think so. I mean, but it's, it's the same thing too. Also, that we're getting back with the bobblehead, right? Like, how many middle relievers get a bobblehead? Same thing with the, with the jersey. The guys that have gotten the jerseys is like your Freddie Freeman and your Mookie Betts. Yeah, your Clayton Kershaw, right? I I don't think that they. I don't even remember like a Kelly Jansen, you know, jersey. Uh, ooh, yeah. I don't. I don't think there's ever been nothing like that. And yeah, I I saw Joe back at when they did the gala, and I asked him about. Um, the quakes, you know how the, they did the. Oh the yeah, they, they they did a uh, they did a replica, a replica jersey of the Chaquetas jersey. Yeah, and that thing was super popular, and they're gonna actually have a bobblehead there, where he's in in that uniform. So I'm sure that's gonna go through. Like, oh, so this is Joe. K I mean, he's not only in 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 you know at the Dodgers, you know, he's doing the same thing with the quakes, right? And and I told him like, I don't remember many people becoming a logo, like a logo for a team. Like, I mean, you got to go back to like, you know, what, what's the MLB logo? Is it you know, Harmon, Harmon Killebrew, right? Or yeah, like who becomes a logo for a team, right? I mean, Joe Kelly's done that too. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Last thing is I've been, so I've been wrestling with this question. I've wrestled it with, well, not wrestle. I'll tell you what Joe said. What should Joe do after he finishes playing? Like this is, this is the big question, right? It's it's obviously like he's we've we've gone through how popular he is. We've gone through how unique he is. Um, I don't see. I don't think the 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 easy answer, not the easy answer, but the answer a lot of people. Oh, he could get into broadcasting. I'm like, no, he couldn't, because he he would swear too much. He just would. I mean, believe me, guys. I monitored every one of his appearances during this book book tour. <laughs> there wasn't one where he didn't swear. 
So, which is, you know, which is another good thing. It's unique, right? It's it's unique. I mean, not unique. I, put it this way. I've always, the, the guys that I've always liked is, are genuine people. Like, this is another thing. You know, like we could, he, you said he's relatable. He's also genuine. And there's nothing fake about any of this stuff he's doing. So, uh, so anyway, you guys got any ideas? You know, I've seen uh, something on on Spectrum. Dodger, where they they uh, they cover the Dodgers. I saw this thing where he's out with his family, hanging out with his kids, and I saw how his relationship with his with his son. Yeah, I see him, a high school coach, with his kids when his kids are playing ball. The other thing I I could see hit you know a bullpen coach would be you know fitting him. Fit, it would fit him well because he's got that energy to you know get the bullpen guys going. You know so. That's what that's what I see him in the future doing one of those or, or just being you know spending time with the family after he that's, retires. That those are two good ones. Those are two really what because he he loves he coaches Knox's he helps coach Knox's um the team which by the way that team the one he had in Arizona it was him Aaron Bates former major leaguers Cody Ross Ben Francisco Peter Borges all in the same coaching staff. <laughs> But but the slight, other thing, slight advantage. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, and but you mentioned bullpen, like bullpen coach. The other thing about Joe is that he's really smart when it comes to this stuff. When he, and and this is part of the t- things he gets in trouble because he almost gets bored with just the regular stuff. Like one of the things that I remember have doing a a podcast with him last. I think it was last spring, and he's like, I just sat in my bed. I wanted to learn how to do a four seamer. So I all night, I was just doing YouTube clips, how to throw a four seamer, how to throw a four seamer. Like this, this is like, and then we did another one at his house this, this past spring. And we're talking about how guys throw spitballs, not that he would ever throw one, but how does that happen? How does that work? The, the leg kick, you know, you obviously have the leg kick, you know, like the timing of it. He's always thinking that way. So that's a good one, Carlos. Absolutely. So Roger, you got one? Yeah, no, I kind of see him in that same in that same vein, kind of being a coach, some type of coach. I mean, but you know, he already has this this media right here. I mean, podcast, right? Just the, your daily, your oh, daily, your up. your daily, your weekly podcast with Joe Kelly, right? Just hearing Joe Kelly, you know, he wants to pump people up. You know, he he comes on his podcast and just lets it go. I think I think people will be into that. So I don't know if you heard. So I we we actually asked this. Because I was like, okay, you own, you own us. You know, I work for you, Joe. You own baseballs and boring. But he said the podcast that he wants to do is interviewing the most dangerous people in the world. <laughs> That's what he wants to do. He wants to interview like, um, you know, he's like, I want to sit down with El Chapo. I want to sit down, you know, like with these guys. He's like, I want to interview, uh, you know, serial killers, you know, and that's what he he wants because I want to get inside because that's what another thing that you know he's really fascinated with psychology and and part part of the book was him talking about well what would you do if you weren't a baseball player and he said he would be an undercover narcotics agent with like tats all over himself shaved head you know and he's like he still would want to do it but like it's that's the mindset so yeah so I don't know if you could do that podcast, but listen, the baseballs and boring umbrella is a bro- has a broad reach. We'll do anything. <laughs> I could I could definitely see him kind of like uh kind of like Dennis Rodman, right? When he went to oh Korea, the, oh Korea, to, right? Something like that, right? He's kind of he's gonna go be in there and just you know talk to these guys and kind of like hey, yeah. what, what's it really about? And you know, kind of get well, that's get, what I said. The, I said head. I said I expected to him to come back with world peace when he when he went over to, to Korea. Uh, this time. So, um, but, uh, but guys, I really appreciate you taking the time and, um, and I look forward to seeing you guys out there in LA uh, in July, I believe. So, um, and if, uh, if you don't score, if you have any t- problem scoring the Jersey or bobblehead, let me know. We pay in jerseys and bobbleheads. So I appreciate it. Got it. Thanks, Thanks Rob. Rob. Appreciate it.